It's an elegant weapon from a more civilized age. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today Lenny has asked me to play some smallpox. This is one of those archetypes that is essentially dead at a competitive level at this point. A few diehards will still force some results on it, but it's a pretty hard sell to want to play smallpox in Legacy right now. Fire design, in particular, just really upped the average power level of one card. Pox wants to stop everything. Pops, Pox just wants to kill everything. Stop everything before it happens with discard. Make it so that you have no lands to play things in the first place. And it used to be, if something got through, you know, you take two or three points of damage. And now, in the, like... Merktide Regent, Muxus, Uro World, a lot of times that's just like not true anymore. And if you fail to stop something, it has drastic consequences on the game. There was a time in Legacy and some other formats where things like Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre or just sinkholing and him to Turoking your opponent into Oblivion was a play pattern that was competitive. But these days, given how many cards have powerful ETB abilities, so many ways to make extra mana, be it like land drops, better artifact mana than ever, the prevalence of Ancient Tomb, sometimes destroying a land or even multiple lands isn't enough anymore. But if you'll bear with me for a few, I'd like to pretend that Liliana of the Veil vale is still good, and let's see what we're capable of. Today's video is sponsored by IntoTheAM.com. They have awesome, comfortable clothing, which are work appropriate, and really cool t-shirts that are also very comfortable. Uh, this one, called Geisha Gears, is on its way to my place right now, and I'm very excited about it. So today and tomorrow, there is a site-wide clearance sale and you can save 30 to 95% off on a lot of their really cool products. And my promo code THRABENU stacks with that too. So check out the link in the video description to intotheam.com. So here's the deck list that I found for today. Uh, and apologies, I forgot to write down the username uh, who ended up brewing this one. I think it was from the Pox Discord, but I couldn't find the list again when I did a quick look. So generally speaking, we're going to do the pox thing of trying to dark ritual our way to something broken. And a lot of the times that might just be something as simple as like thought sees you and then sinkhole your land once we know that our sinkhole is going to resolve. Sometimes that will be playing an Ashiok Dream Render to make it so that fetch lands don't work. Or sometimes we're just going to get established with a Liliana of the Veil early on. If you take a quick look at the land count here, we are on 25 lands, which is a lot for a legacy deck, especially one that doesn't have something like a Chrome Mox. But again, the idea is you don't want the smallpox to keep you from casting spells. You want to just naturally draw more land than your opponent. But we do need to make sure that we have some mana sinks in the deck. So Mishra's Factory and Castle Lochtwain are going to be ways to squeeze a little bit extra out of all of these land drops, as are Wastelands. Sometimes you will see these Urza... Ur oh, sorry. Sometimes you will see these Pox decks playing Urza's Saga in these Mishra's Factory slots and then playing a small uh, Urza Saga tutor package, maybe with some things like Shadow Spears, some sort of like Relic of Progenitus or other ways to draw a card and so on and so forth. Sometimes like a rack if you're being spicy. The one other really neat thing that's here is we do have Sedgemore Witch combo in this deck list. So we do have the ability to create infinite creatures. We do so by casting a Chain of Smog, targeting ourselves, and then we can copy the spell and Magecraft triggers on either cast or copy. Um, as you can see, we only have two copies of each of these cards, so the plan is not to, like, consistently assemble this. It's more of a, oops, I won button that the deck can occasionally do. 
I'm not the biggest fan of some of the choices in this deck list. Uh, I think it's good enough to play and try out. Um, but historically, I'm just not that big of a fan of Cling to Dust. I think it is very, very, very slow. And similarly, Castle Lockwain not entering untapped on turn one can be a really big deal if it's your only black source and you have like a Mishra's Factory Wasteland hand. So those are the things that I think are most sketchy within the main deck here. Uh, sideboard maxes out on Ashiox as a giant screw you to fetch lands and other tutor decks. And otherwise we just have a pile of kind of generic answers. Um, notably there's Engineered Plague here over Plague Engineer, which is a choice to avoid targeted removal spells. And Engineered Pl or sorry, Plague Engineer would also run into our own smallpox. So I think that's all I've got to say about this one. If you end up liking what you see today and you need to buy some cards, or you need some of those new sweet spoilers, there's a mono black uncounterable removal spell, for example, from our uh, new set that might fit into this deck. Check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order. Let's battle. This deck makes me feel like it's like 2012. It's round two of a tournament. I just played against Mud in round one. Oh. Okay. Chromox? I can just take Chromox and obliterate a bunch of my opponent's lands and keep them from casting stuff. That's probably okay. Unlicensed Hearse is a little hard to deal with. I'm not great at answering artifacts, but I'm just going to plan on taking that out of my opponent's hand at some point, I think. All right. That's not the best for me. Sedgemore Witch. I might end up playing that in the not-too-distant future. Um, that's safe with Smallpox because you get a Critter on attack. So I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and obliterate this land and not let my opponent drop something like a Blood Moon immediately. Yeah, you can, you can take the stuff out of my graveyard. Uh, rip Cling to Dust. Sure. Uh, Wasteland. Yep. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> My phone is just fucking done with me. Um, I think that's a lazy concession, honestly. Like, this game is 10 more turns away from being over. And I, in fact, would say that my opponent is currently still favored at this stage of the game. So Feed the Swarm is creature removal. That's totally fine. Ensnaring Bridge is reasonable. I haven't seen everything that's going on with my opponent's deck. Torpor Orb is a thing that's okay. It can stop initiative in particular, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Engineered Plague and Torpor Orb are in this like field of reasonable, as is Null Rod. I never want to be playing Ashiok. Like, that's just not good against the Mono Red deck. Smallpox is weird because sometimes it is going to be batshit insane and sometimes my opponent will play like a Goblin Rabble Master and I won't get the value that I need. I probably have to get rid of Cling to Dust if my opponent is going to be playing uh, somewhere on the order of three copies of Unlicensed Hearst after post sideboard games. And maybe I get rid of this. It's not going to kill a lot of my opponent's creatures. And this stuff is acceptable. I'll. Form an exact plan once I see what my opponent's exact build looks like. But all of these on the draw are a little slow. Honestly, my deck's kind of just slow on the draw, but like, shh. Uh, yeah, this is fine. It's awkward if I get chaliced. Because Dark Ritual Sinkhole Thoughtseize is a hell of a drug. Uh, okay, not chalice. Uh, Fable is good value for my opponent. Another smallpox, you say? I am probably interested in casting a smallpox to get rid of that token. Let's thought seize. Okay, yeah, my opponent could have led on Chalice and made this game much harder for me, but they didn't. Take Chalice. Cast smallpox. So my opponent loses their Ancient Tomb. They lose their other mana source. I'm, I'm going to be slowed down here. 
but the damage to my opponent is probably considerably worse than the damage to me. And uh, my opponent tilts off into the Stratosphere, Pox's best deck of all time. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. All right, we're playing against Bob. We have Sedgemore Witch, Chain of Smog combo in hand, but no initial black sources, so... Mulligan it is. Okay. I'm going to keep this one. I don't really have enough gas here, but I don't think I'm going to throw back lands and spells on... Ooh, fancy. Uh, I've obviously been hyping up this card. Uh, that's a great draw. I am a very big fan of Stalactite Stalker. We'll see if this is like a mono black scam deck or if this is like blue black. I'm only taking one here. It is another one. Understood. This is your end step, uh, meaning I probably want to just go ahead and remove right now. So, please sacrifice a non-token creature for me. I'll take out this one, I'll take out the next one with Lily, and we'll go from there. It's still possible my opponent is blue-black. Uh, it would be weird for them to keep a basic swamp opening hand if they are, like, a Demir scam deck but it's not impossible. Okay. We're looking like mono black scam. Goodbye, Lily. And we'll see if the grief ends up coming back. It doesn't. Uh, cool. I can't overstate how good smallpox would be as a draw right now. I think I, 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 think I offer the chain of smog uh, trade where we both go hellbent. I'm just thinking about whether or not I want... A pseudo 3 3 blocker or this. I think I want the pseudo 3 3 blocker. Um, there's no guarantee that my opponent actually wants to lose four cards. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird spot. It is blue. So my opponent discarded Force of Will Days and then just did not copy. That's reasonable. So I'm taking two more from this. I can, in theory, remove this right now. I don't know that that's actually going to happen. Because, like, if my opponent is not willing to trade everything, what do they probably have? And the answer is probably spot removal, right? Like, we've already seen snuff out. So, like, snuff out, dismember, fatal push. I guess this is menace. Right. All right, I'm at 14. Uh, grief is going to miss. I think I'm going to take some damage to draw a card off Castle Lockdwain because of how good it is to just resolve something like a Smallpox or an Edict. Dark Ritual was not what I was looking for. Neither was another factory. Now double blocks are on the menu. It's still kind of a blowout, though. Okay. Like, I'm very clearly not the aggressor right now. So let's attempt to animate both. And I'm going to go ahead and double block here. I will not activate the ability of this Mishra's factory unless my opponent like fires off a removal spell. So as soon as they fire off a removal spell, I will activate this targeting the other one. And then I still trade with this. Or sorry, was this... I've already declared my block, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my opponent could have Fatal Pushed prior to blocks and kept their creature on board. Uh, I'm unhappy about these draws. I don't think I am going to Castle Locked Wayne until I make another land drop. Uh, that's fine. At this point, maybe I double Dark Ritual and activate Castle Locked Wayne, lose two life to draw a card. These Dark Rituals are, like, not hyper-relevant for the remainder of this game. So let's do that. Uh, I regret doing this first main phase. I can Wasteland this. 
Um, okay, I'm I'm in a weird situation now. So I'm gonna either make my opponent wasteland this or float mana for bowmasters. Eh, it's fuck, it's fucking bowmasters. Damn it. Pass priority. Give up on drawing the card. Yes. Uh, but I fucked up this turn. Okay, so now that my opponent puts the bowmasters on the stack, now I'll draw my card. Uh, nice. So I'll take that. This is fine. I'm okay with smallpoxing still. I'll discard the Urborg. One junk's a brainstorm that's not castable. I'll junk a tapped swamp. All right, so I didn't navigate that the best, but it worked out. Okay, my opponent has found a new land. I've got a 1-1 one, one to beat. I have the ability to beat the 1-1. One, one. This is a sorcery, so we'll just take it out right now. I don't get to draw very many cards with this Castle Lockwain unless I draw Cling to Dust. Uh, which would be reasonable as a thing to hold up to stop like grief and stalactite stalkers from coming back from the graveyard off reanimate. It is cantrip o'clock. And that is no shuffle. <laughs> uh, this is a particularly bad draw. Because it makes activating Castle Locked Wayne more awkward. If I were Bob, I would have put a land into hand as well, so I don't think I cast the Thoughtseize here. I think this one just rots in my hand for the rest of the game until my opponent accidentally griefs it. Uh, Delver's scary. I'm gonna take a natural draw here. Uh, not great. Lots of answers to it, but not great. And this is presumably going to hit me for three. Yep. So I am at one. I will die to a Bowmasters at any point later on in this game. Smallpox is no longer castable. I am dead. GG. Feed the Swarm in. Leyline of the Void is probably good enough. Ensnaring Bridge is very actively good. Engineered Plague, I guess I can consider. Um, putting that on uh, up, up, uh, Orc is reasonable. I think I'm going to take the Ashiok out. It's kind of nice versus troll cycling, but I, I think I'm not always the best at this. I think I'm going to get rid of some amount of targeted discard. Like, my goal is to play to the board and largely ignore the hand. I think that means taking out Thought Seizes as well. I can probably cut Sedgemore Witch and just plan on winning with Mishra's Factory or a Liliana Emblem. But, you know, we are, we are setting up for a long battle. Okay, I have a maybe medium, medium minus power level hand here. Cling to Dust doesn't really do the best job at stopping something like a Grief from coming back from play on turn one. So, like, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, Delver's fine. Do I cast the Cling to Dust right now? Let's say yes. I think my mana is super taxed this game, so I'm just going to turn this into a new card. Play lines, whatever. I think I would like to play smallpox around days. So I think I am going to try to just destroy a land here. And sometimes this is not even worth countering if my opponent has a counter spell. But I think playing around Potentially known counter spells is kind of a big deal. And I'm willing to take three damage to do that. Let's see if anything else is coming. As my opponent puts more creatures on the board, like each individual edict gets worse and worse. Okay, sinkhole on the table. Just sorcery speed brainstorm in an attempt to play around orcish bowmasters, which is a card that I reasonably could be playing. But we're not on good cards today. No siree. Children's Edict. So, I don't actually really want Smallpox to resolve. But I think this one is my bait spell. Like, it feels like... Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm very clearly wrong. Alright, I'll lose a land. My opponent discards a Bowmasters. 
I have Sinkhole for their next land drop, otherwise I drop Shoulder's Edict and we can work towards Liliana plus forever. Sure. Let's fetch and ponder. So there is the fetch. A reanimate on Orcish Bowmasters. Sure. Uh, that's fine. I think I am planning on just attacking the land here. Um, Daze is very good against this play because they just bounce the land directly. Uh, otherwise, I'm hoping to just leave my opponent with zero mana and clean up this stuff over the course of a couple turns. Or I could just draw Engineered Plague and, you know, answer all of them forever. Huh, opponent has a surprising number of lands. Sure. Link Dress is four mana, right? Yep. I'll take two. No big deal. Urborg is a little awkward. I'm going to play it, but it turns an island into an underground, see if my opponent has access to one. Please sacrifice a non-token creature. And uh, hopefully I get to play Lily next turn. But a lot of stuff can go wrong here. Like, my opponent can just, like, go land drop Murktide Regent or something of that caliber. And then the edicts just aren't good enough. Yeah, there's underground, see? There's Murktide Regent. So, like, the problem here is that even if I top deck another removal spell, I just take six as I wait for the ability to get rid of this. So, I still have to cast it so that, like, my next removal spell has the possibility of taking out these things. Uh, and I think that means that I'm deterministically dead. Because I just take seven here, then I can edict, I take six afterwards. Uh, yeah, life. Life is bad. This is also now out of the range of Engineered Plague as well. Yep, and, and this is a great example of like why you, you play a pox strategy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh. My opponent probably has a Brazen Borrower or two that can answer that. Um, we can kick this. Uh, maybe I don't. I do have Cling to Dust in my graveyard, but let's just take out Murktide Regent. I just 100% know that this resolves right now. The uh, No, I boarded Thought Seizes out, so that's not actually awkward. Yeah, you can you can take more lands. That's Oh, my opponent doesn't have any swamps left. Uh, cool. Uh, let's take out the Bowmaster. There's some argument to take out the Orc army, because if I draw an Engineered Plague, I can put it on Orc and the Bowmaster dies from that, but, you know. Uh, land pass. Do I do it? I think I do it. I could do it to gain life rather than draw a card. So let's just take out a card. Not open myself up further to Bowmasters. This is great. Uh, hopefully there's not Force of Will blue card. There's not. Uh, let's just go ahead and shrink that down. And this will eventually win me the game. Uh, it takes a little while, but it'll do it. Um, Leyline is a Magic the Gathering card. Continue to shrink this. All right, Fox. All right. My opponent started to play something and then stopped. Let's go ahead and plus here. I'll call it a turn. I'll still have Cling to Dust available. I will probably just use it to gain life so that it is less likely that I accidentally die. But I can hold it up for reanimate purposes if I would prefer. A hard cast grief, that's fine. This is a window where I could draw a card safely with Cling to Dust. I think I'll just gain life. I don't want to hit land land and create a situation where i could end up leaving cards in hand all right there's castle locked wayne i'll plus on this grief doesn't get to attack and stop my lily and once i lily ultimate that feels pretty hard to beat yeah you got it this is no big deal I guess Stifle would be, like, the most savage fucking thing in the entire world, but I am not expecting that. So this emblem uh, spirals. So it starts out as two, and then you get four and whatnot from there. And I'm at enough life that 
I'm just not going to be dead to bridge disappearing for a single turn. Seems like my opponent has like a Bowmasters or something. Let's cast Engineered Plague. Good enough for Force of Will. Oh, it's a fatal push, sure. So that slows down the Liliana emblem, uh, which is fine. I don't need it to be around for that long to just create a board of zombies that can kill my opponent in one shot. For sure, sure. My opponent has three blockers. It's two plus number of zombies I control. This is just going to make six zombies. I think I can go ahead and hold this swamp. And then I can start thinking about attacking. Opponent snags Ponder. Um, so now we're in kind of a weird spot where, like, my opponent might want to use discard on me to keep me from attacking with a bunch of zombies. That's no shuffle. A smallpox, sure. If I attack with ten of these, my opponent blocks with seven and very much takes lethal. Um, I, I think I'm in for going in. Yeah, okay. That was, that was just 20 points in d damage off a of Planeswalker Emblem. Uh, it took a while, though. This is fucking turn 18, folks. I don't think I am making any changes to what I've done here. That ensnaring bridge top deck was insane. I'm going to have to do that again. I mean, this is what I'm looking for. This has a ley line to stop some of my opponent's fastest starts. I have, uh, you know, in theory, two removal spells in this hand. This is what my opponent wants. Like, my opponent wants an early creature that I have to respect. And if they can back this up with two or three counter spells, they have a good chance of riding it to victory. So this is no Delver Flip and a pause in upkeep, which probably means that we're about to see a cycled troll to shuffle, uh, which is what's happening. Not going to graveyard. My opponent does get a basic swamp, so I don't get to have wasteland fun in the short term. I'll take a little damage. Urborg. Urborg's awkward. I probably keep it. I'm going to need black, black. It's just like I don't like turning this into an underground sea that I can't wasteland. Um, there's no guarantee that I have to play this Urborg. Like, this spell might not be resolving. Yep. Um, but I, I think I'm casting it there. Like, I think I need to just curve, like, removal spell into removal spell and leave myself with the opportunity to do it yet one more time. Wasteland. Uh, that's very good. I'll take one damage. I can leave Factory up to potentially block here, which is, I think, what I will do. My opponent did show me that Fatal Push is still in their deck, so, like, this is ever so slightly awkward. I think I'm still going to offer it up. Yep, that's fine. I'll, I'll take the one. Sure. There's an Edict, um, which I will probably do now off Factory. Please sacrifice a non-token creature. And the reason that I want to do this is Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, board clear. Lily incoming as soon as next turn. If I can wait a little while, I might wait a little while. We'll see. Thoughtsies? What's the pause for, Bob? Awkward stalactite stalker. Understood. This is the prize. This is the thing that I want to resolve towards the end of the game. Am I willing to play Dazable Lily? My opponent has used one daze. I think every counterspell I get out of my opponent's hand is important, given that Ensnaring Bridge is such a prize. I, I think I will risk this. It occurs. I, I will just Edict. Keeping the board clear is critical. If I want future Edicts to be good, now, sometimes my opponent just, like, Bowmasters pings this and then has two creatures on board, and it's not the best for me, but such is life. I don't think I want to plus immediately with Lily and just leave the creature on board. It is a new Stalactite Stalker. Got it. So now we start getting into weird territory. I definitely plus... I think I discard Wasteland. I don't really want to play an Urborg, but I want to have access to Black Black if my opponent Wastelands me. All right, Reanimate is gone. Let's play Wasteland. 
I don't have anything else to do with my mana. I will fire this off. I think some portion of the time this just eats a force of will right here. Ooh, it resolved. Okay. Now, Stalactite Stalker does get to attack this turn. It doesn't get to attack on future turns, though. This is only creatures, right? Yeah, negative X. Negative X. Sorry, I just had some weird sound come out of my house. Powder Keg. Artifact and creature. Okay, so that's an answer to Ensnaring Bridge. Oh, what does this destroy? Creature or enchantment. Got it. So, yeah. I will feed the swarm. I'll plus here. My factory doesn't get to attack right now. I am under my own ensnaring bridge. I'm not in that bad of shape. Curse is fine. It can get a little awkward later. So I will go ahead... And Dark Ritual. I'm just going to discard it anyway. I will then Liliana plus. This takes my opponent off of Force of Will. There's Force of Will. I will activate a Castle Locked Wing. Make a new land drop. And pass. My opponent can start chipping away at my graveyard. It's not that big of a deal. Outer Keg will tick up to two. Cling to Dust. Um, uh, uh, awkward situation. Maybe I just activate this now. What, one, two, three, four. Using a two mana afterwards. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and activate this now, and it's a little awkward if my opponent has Bowmasters. A new Lily. I think I'm willing to fire this up. This can currently attack under the Ensnaring Bridge. Get my opponent for two. Then I'll continue to Lily plus. I think I'll just get rid of the Cling to Dust and let my opponent have it. Like, the card's very awkward right now because of Bowmasters and Unlicensed Hearse, so I'm just going to let it go and keep an extra removal spell in hand. Yeah, you got it. Outer Keg goes up to the point where it can eliminate Ensnaring Bridge. And we'll just see how my opponent navigates this. It is a grief. My opponent takes out my secondary lily that I was planning to save for a rainy day. Oh, more other lily. Um, obviously, that's quite good. I will go ahead and cast that. Plus this lily. Plus that lily. And call it a turn. And that's enough to make Bob scoop it up. Uh, we're winning with Pox today, folks. It's feeling good. This right here is the Curse of Castle Locked Wayne, right? So if this is a basic swamp, this hand is quite strong. It's not perfect because there's a lot of black, black pip cards here, but it's much better. And as is, I probably mulligan it. Do I do math? I guess I'll do math. So I'm at about 54% to hit a black card, or sorry, a black mana source in two draws. That's acceptable. It's not great. I think I'm going to ship this one. I'm going to say that this is being rewarded for that. Uh, I'm going to keep this and get rid of Cling to Dust. I will immediately get paired against Reanimator for getting rid of that card, but... I think I just want to be able to thought seize, removal spell, removal spell, and smallpox is the plan for later on in the game. Misty. Oh yeah, so I okay. Uh it's not reanimator, but same gist. Okay, that could have been way worse for me. Uh we're playing against probably a bug hogak deck, if I were to guess. My edicts are very awkward versus Stitcher Supplier, and Thoughtseize is not amazing either. Yeah, there's a Hogak. All right, Brainstorm or Force of Will. Probably the Force of Will. So my opponent, in theory, can fetch a Dryad Arbor out of their deck and then just play a Hogak, right? It's how many? Five, yeah. So... Then I have to Edict three times, which is all of these, in order to do that. Oh, double fuck. And now my opponent just has Hogak, 
and every edict I play is brutal. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I'm not really on targeted removal, right? No. We're on edicts minus blood chief's thirst, which I won't be able to kick. So I can take nine, go to nine. This is a Dryad Arbor. I think I'm dead. I think I'm not going to show my opponent more cards. Hey, I think just leaving that ambiguity puts me in a better place. Hello? My entire sideboard? Probably. Like, all of these cards are reasonable to bring in. The Ashiox aren't the easiest to defend, but they nuke the graveyard and stop, like, fetching for Dryad Harbor shenanigans. My opponent can operate on not a lot of mana. Sinkhole's not great. The Chain of Smog type stuff is, like, not the best. Witches might go. Um, I probably don't thought seize. This gets me pretty much the entire sideboard here. I'll probably just keep a Witch. I still have a bunch of Edicts and stuff that it can combo with. This is... Hand of Magic the Gathering cards. It's whatever. I don't think I'm going to mulligan it, but I'm not stoked. Oh, I don't think I told my uh, my anecdote. So I I heard a weird noise last round, right? And I went out, and before I started recording this league, I made myself a smoothie. And I noticed that my ice maker wasn't working very well. And I, you know, put it on my to-do list, like, check ice maker. As it turns out, my ice maker had kind of frozen over, and I had kind of realized that at the time, and I shook it up a bit, and all the ice that I had shaken up just kind of, like, birthed itself, and ultimately, like, just kind of came out of its own volition. So I had to take a few minutes, put on some winter gloves, and uh, kind of pry the ice maker out of it, out of the freezer and clean it, which I guess is better than... Uh, the cat's having knocked something over. My hand's now very slow. Huh. Um. No? Feels like no. I think I just want to have, like, Engineer Plague and Liliana the Last Hope available prior to doing that. I don't want to play Smallpox and then get knocked off of Black Black and not be able to cast this. It's a troll. Okay. Are you reanimating? You are Stitcher's supplier ring. Okay, cool. I think I'm just dropping Lily. Ooh. That's more interesting. Now I can Wasteland and more? Okay. Wasteland that. Dark Ritual. I think we get this ticking up. Like, sometimes, like, Force of Will blue card is a thing that happens here. Yeah, yeah basically. That's fine. So now, in the not-too-distant future, I like can Engineered Plague on Zombie and then have Smallpox to clean up something like a Hogak. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll take the one. These are literally just zombies, right? Yeah. Uh, Cool. So this is kind of a don't try this at home kids moment. Oh, is your last card a daze? Is it? Uh, it unfortunately is, which makes both edicts in my hand much, much, much worse. Makes the wasteland in play better. Yeah, this, uh, this kind of gives my opponent a very awkward window to do something disgusting. The chip damage from the Stitcher supplier doesn't really matter. But my cards are currently quite awkward. Like I can't really cast Smallpox and Lily Minus might be good for my opponent. Lily Plus also isn't great because Bowmasters is a thing. Opponent opts to Sorcery Speed it. Sure. Okay, they're going to ping their own Stitcher Supplier to try to find a Hogak, and they missed. Sure. Um, so, like, obviously this isn't going to be the best here. Because <sighs> this gets sacrificed, my opponent can try to find a Hogak. They don't. I think I am supposed to Wasteland this. 
I lose Lily and take one. Then I smallpox, I lose my wasteland, they lose their black source. My smallpox is not literally, but effectively uncounterable. Ooh, how about that? Play it minus, go to four. Get, it gets attacked down to, yeah, I think this works out well for me. I will, I will go ahead and mill you still. But I hit a Hogak. I did take out a Hogak. This Ashiok gets knocked to two loyalty, and then assuming that my opponent doesn't play another creature, I maybe get to keep this around while like denying my opponent's fetch lands. Uh, this can do some cool stuff. Factory. Yes. Slightly weird, but yes. Okay. Force of Will blue card remaining. Understood. Uh, I'm going to keep Ashiok at its current loyalty value because I want to animate Mishra's factory and be able to block on an attack and keep the Ashiok alive. Because currently my opponent cannot fetch, so I can wasteland a fetch land right now. Okay, opponent does not attack. Now I get to untap and I have a chance to like draw a new edict or something. Herborg is not good, but fine. Like, I'll, I'll play it out. I'm currently holding the ground. Mistress Factory is now a 3-3, effectively in combat, by the way. All right, moves are happening. So I have to keep in mind that a post-combat Orcish Bowmasters can be a thing. I think I hit this one and leave them with the actual Bowmasters. I don't want this thing to grow larger post-combat, I think. All right. Ashiok goes. Okay, no, that's, that's it. They just took one loyalty off it, so I can't, like, nuke the graveyard while keeping this static effect around. Cool. I'll attempt to drop another blocker to continue to protect this. I'm not going to start going on the offensive yet. And now instants and sorcery spells on my end start to look really strong. Uh, Bowmaster goes on in there. I mean, I'll, I'll block with uh, Mishra's Factory. I haven't quite figured out why my opponent is doing this yet. Like, they're nowhere close to some sort of, like, relevant delve or threshold number. Sh okay, sure, that makes sense. So now you're going to ping my Ashiok to kill it. Uh, that's fine. So this is on. I think I'm in pretty good shape, though. Sure. Would you please sacrifice a non-token creature? Fantastic. Uh, and now I think I'm the beatdown. At least for the current turn cycle. All right. Um, notably, my opponent can tap this as a swamp without paying life, but then... It's not necessarily a great thing for them. It just gets wastelanded afterwards. Sure. So now I start having to worry about things like Orcish Bowmasters being viable in combat. Okay, my opponent just gives up. Uh, that's fair. Uh, this is actually a pretty interesting spot of like, how much stuff do I attack with? Do I endanger the Sedgemore Witch in combat? Uh, it's actually quite interesting. And I kind of wish my opponent didn't concede because it's a fun puzzle to work through. Okay, do I want the other Sedgemore Witch for this game? Because it was just quite good. I could go down one Edict effect, like I could go down one Smallpox type effect to play another. Like, I'm very heavy on three drops in my current configuration. I could see going down one of these to just play another win condition. Like, this is something that helps me stem the bleeding from small creature attacks. Because, like, at the end of the day, it is possible for me to, like, put up an ensnaring bridge and then lose to just a bunch of 1-1 one, one, Dryad Arbor, uh, not Stalactite Stalker, uh, Stitcher Supplier beats. I have kept my opener. It's a little slow. But I'm not sure that I just punt double removal spell and an Ashiok away. Um, well, I've got removal spells for days. But, you know, we are living in Orcish Bowmaster's world, so that's a thing to keep in mind. Like, the 
The edicts only go so far. My opponent took a while on their brainstorm, so something about their hand is weird or tough, and I'll have to kind of work backwards to figure out what that thing is. Okay, are we just uh, are we just reanimating? Because I'm pretty well suited to beat that with three uh, removal spells here. Getting a basic. Yeah, it's just reanimate on troll. Like that's perfectly fine. We don't really want to feed the swarm that one. Uh, cling to dust is whatever. Uh, let's try to edict this. Please sacrifice a non-token creature. And it's gone. Uh, feeling pretty good about the hand now. Surgical extraction. That is a choice of a card to play in this game. This is your hashtag don't surgical that on Twitter. If you're not going to produce a creature right now, it also is correct to just wait on that. Okay, Sorcery Speed, Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, well, that's fine. Now what are you doing? A Hogak afterwards, sure. Ooh. So that gives me, what, three, four, five mana for this turn? Um, yeah, this is uh, pretty reasonable. Hopefully there's not Force of Will blue card backing this up. Um, I guess I... Dark Ritual first. Okay, no, there's nothing backing it up. All right. Nuke the Hogak. Then I have three mana. I think I work on just clearing the board. So I'll take out one of these two. I'll let you have the Lily. Then I cling to dust the Hogak while playing Ashiok to clear it out. And I think I'm okay where I end up with after all that. Just not enough cards in Graveyard right now for Hogak, unless there's some sort of weird double Stitcher Supplier God Hand situation. Uh, looks like we're dodging that, though. I did take more life than I would want off Feed the Swarm, but say Levy. Fantastic. My opponent might have another Surgical. They stopped at a weird time. So let's Urborg. Ashiok minus around days, probably. Ooh. A Dryad Arbor is fine. Swamp Cycle's fine. Uh, okay. Destroy your land? Yeah, so like, I'll take that out. And then I'll junk your stuff. I'm fine leaving the Bowmasters there for a little while. Like, my deck is full of removal. I will, I will find something to stop that. I think just taking my opponent off of that green mana is more important than stopping Bowmasters. You know, I could just draw lands for the rest of the game and curse myself forever, but I think that's my plan. I have seen very few green cards from my opponent, but that doesn't mean they're not there. You know, I don't want to get blown out by a Veil of some Summer or something like that later on. Hey, very nice. So now I can create Magecraft tokens uh, using my Cling to Dust. I prefer for my opponent to put something into Graveyard. Like, that would be better for me. A Grief. So I will just cast this to get a token. Uh, that does give my opponent a ping, though. I don't actually have a creature in there right now. Maybe I don't give my opponent the ping. Okay. You can have it. It's still a two-for-one for me. And I can bring it back later if I want. Alright, so my opponent is attacking, which presumably means there's some sort of, like, reanimate secondary Orcish Bowmaster nonsense that's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna let it go. Okay, it is a second Orcish Bowmasters. That costs my opponent three life. Okay, uh, let's just, like, draw a removal spell or something here. <laughs> Humorously, it is another cling to dust. Uh, I'm just gonna nuke my opponent's graveyard. There are two Hogax in exile. I'm overall good with that. I'm just gonna hold the cling to dust for a little while. Like, it is... It is still a relevant card in the matchup. And I probably don't get to easily just take out two separate creatures with it. Or sorry, like two separate creatures from graveyards due to the escape restrictions. 
Are we fine with this? I don't need this Urborg. I think I am fine with this. Um, the whole cling to dust situation is just awkward. Like maybe I just cast that for three life there. Take out one my Sedgemar Witch from Graveyard. Now that I'm thinking about this a little bit more. Yeah, that's a Hogak chilling in yard. Understood. I don't know, like, leaving the cards in my graveyard so that I can cling to dust something like a Hogak out of there is important. Uh, there have been some weird ones. I think I should have played this game like 5% more slowly, though. Uh, sure, I'm going to go ahead and play this, and then I'm going to take out the Hogak in my opponent's upkeep. Uh, that's fine. I guess I can do it right now. I guess there aren't enough cards in Graveyard for me to have to do that immediately. I guess I can animate Mishra's Factory as a blocker. Yeah. And then I'll do it end step. Unless my opponent puts something like a Stitcher Supplier on the stack, in which case I just immediately cling to dust. Surgical Extraction on Ashiok when I have, like, I guess I can just, like, cast the cling to dust. Um, I could cling to dust my own... Ashiok here if I want to save the Ashioks in deck. I don't think that's necessary. I'll let that go. You potentially just want to do that in my draw step, though. Okay, opponent is chilling. In which case, cling to dust, target Hogak. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We'll just make it so that that's not a problem. The factory walls the little threats for now. Castle Locked Wayne is a medium power level draw right now. I believe there's one Hogak remaining now, assuming my opponent still has all four in. So long term, I would just like to draw Engineer Plague, put it on Orc, and then Castle Locked Wayne and Factory can just run away with this game. Uh, that's kind of where we're at. My opponent attacks with all their creatures. I prioritize taking out this one first. As this can grow, the others can't. And at some point, I, I can shift to being the beatdown. My opponent is at six. Okay, yeah, no attacks from my opponent. We're chilling. I will just continue to make land drops. I have some big bombs in my deck. Um, the Liliana, the last hopes are really good right now. Engineered Plague is really good. Single target removal spells are fine. Another factory is very good. Okay, something has changed. Opponent not willing to attack with everything, but is willing to attack with something. I'm willing to see what's up. Um, so I will go ahead and block the currently 1-1. One, one. Sure. I am fine trading one damage for one body. I think that is very favorable for me. And I'll continue to make land drops. Okay. Stitcher Supplier can be scary if it hits the last Hogak, which it did not. How many Surgical Extractions did my opponent board in versus my deck? And why? Uh, I mean, yes. Like, blocking these Bowmasters gets my Castle Locked Wayne closer towards doing something. And there's already enough cards in Graveyard that a Hogak could easily come back. The Reanimate is fine. This should target my face, not my Factory. Uh, opponent has not played against Factory before, uh, because I have the ability to just pump this, and then this doesn't actually kill it. Okay. Okay, I now have two Factories, so nonsense is afoot. My opponent needs to continue to pressure my life total, but if they pressure my life total too hard, I just swing back with Mishra's Factory and they end up dying. Uh, this is a slight exaggeration, but basically the only card I care about in the remaining 20 cards is the Hogak. This one's interesting. Gives my opponent three more looks at the Hogak. I'm not super well prepared to beat, but I can't go on the offensive right now, and I can't keep taking hits. Um, I, will, I will accept your trade. Doesn't feel great, but I'm going to accept it. We'll see if this hits the Gak. Uh, I win the Devil Deal. It does not hit the Gak. Note that timing my opponent out is also very real here. Uh, my opponent is at five minutes on clock. I think this is game three. I don't remember exactly. Fetchland is fine. 
I assume my opponent will make the same attack as last time. If they make this attack, I might let this one go through now that there's not a second Stitcher Supplier held back. Yeah. And then crack them back. I don't think I play that one. That makes this land better for my opponent. I think I'm going to hold that. I could consider attacking with one Mishra's Factory as a 3-3. Three, three. Um, things, are, things are awkward, though. Okay, they found the Hogak. Um, I've got time. Not a lot. I have a little bit of time. Like an ensnaring bridge would be great. No, I just kind of bottomed out here. So I have six powers worth of Mishra's factory blockers. If I put that in front of Hogak, I take two, three, four, five, six damage. I'm not technically dead. I could play Swamp, activate Castle Locked Wayne, take two, go to eight, and then rip ensnaring bridge. It's two copies of Ensnaring Bridge, three Blood Chiefs, Thirst, one Feed the Swarm that I'm drawing towards. Uh, I'm not actually drawing towards the Feed the Swarm, though. Awkward. I think I try to hit the out to the Hogak here. I may get punished for pl not playing my Urborg. The margins on this game are going to be tight. It is Sedgemore, which... Sure. I end up at five. I play Sedgemore Witch. Force of Will. I think now I'm dead. I can throw six in front of the Hogak. Then I take three, four, five, six. I think if my opponent attacks all out, I'm dead. I mean, this is what happens when you play a 25 land deck. That's not lethal. So I'll animate this. How much do I need to put in front of the Hogak? I put six in front of the Hogak. I'm alive. Okay. I'm alive at one. I guess it's better to put three here, three here, right? That still takes five, but takes out an orc. Um, unless my opponent has a single target removal spell, in which case I already should be dead. We buff up my factories. I'm at one. Okay, that's... Fine. Seems like a thing you do pre-combat. Like, you just see that I'm dead if you attack with literally one more point of damage. So I cling to dust, take a thing out of your graveyard. That puts me to four. I play a new castle locked, Wayne. I activate this. That's a feed the swarm that cannot kill this profitably for me. Um, so I, I am dead, unfortunately. Why does my opponent win the match? Oh, they did you attack me. Did I just, like, math out wrong how much life I was at? Uh, uh, okay, I mean, they were winning either way, but weird. Um, went back and looked at the video for the previous thing. Uh, when I was looking at it, one of the Orcish Bowmaster triggers was just under the, under the other one that hadn't been placed on the stack yet. Um, easy mulligan, no black mana. Um, easy keep. Hand is good. Cling to dust goes away here. And I decide which three mana card I want to entrust the fate of the game to. I think it's Ashiok. I think just turn one fetch denial is quite strong. Liliana of the Veil vale is not what it used to be in terms of just ending the game period full stop. So I, I think I am interested in just shutting off Searching, which is very good against fetch lands, very good against some combo decks. Show me what you're working with here. Uh, it is an Elves deck list. So a lot of this is going to depend on do they have something like a Bayou in hand already that allows them to get on board. Because if they just have a fetch land, they're in rough shape. Ashiok gets to sit here for a while versus that. Nice. So I will take out this critter. If I aggressively minus, I can potentially take out some natural order targets. However, it's very possible that this ends up taking a couple of hits. I'm going to leave its loyalty where it's at for right now. And I think if I top deck another land, there is a very, very high chance that I just win this game. Fiend Artisan. Ashiok helps with that a lot. 
Nice. So we Lily. Edict my opponent. Clear out my opponent's graveyard. You know, keeping the Fiend Artisan and Elvish Reclaimers and stuff in check. Cradle number one has been taken out. Uh, opponent was very lucky in that they had three non-fetch lands here. My opponent's deck does a ton of searching. So, Edgemore Witch. We're gonna Lily Plus. I have to worry about end of turn, like, Endurance. I don't think I have to worry about end of turn Bowmasters. That already should have happened. I am going to Ashiok minus. I, I think I'm good with that. Okay. If my opponent plays Endurance, I will chump block to protect Liliana of the Veil. And go from there. Or rather, I guess I should say I will chump block to protect whichever Planeswalker my opponent protects. I think. It's possible they could go after Ashiok instead. Uh, yeah, I will. I will chump. It's a little awkward because Sedgemore Witch could provide a gajillion D blockers if I get to wait a little while. The Liliana minus can be very awkward versus Orcish Bowmasters. So we'll see if that happens here. Oh, it doesn't. Hell yeah. So I get to play a new Liliana of the Veil. And plus, so at this point, if my opponent ever has Orcish Bowmasters, they ping this and then can attack it in combat to finish. So I think I'm just going to continue to be aggressive here and keep the graveyard clear. I would love to just like end up accidentally taking out Atraxa or Crater Hoof or something so I don't have to worry about those if this Ashiok ever does end up leaving play. It is a new Fiend Artisan, which I will just take out via Liliana. That is not a big deal. Get out. Uh, and now I'm chilling. I have a very, very, very tenuous hold on this game. Uh, that's awkward. Removal spell would be great, so that I don't have to lose my Lily. Uh, thank you. Please sacrifice a non-token creature. A Lily Plus, hoping to dodge Bowmasters yet again. Nice. Natural Order is gone. All right, fantastic. Wasteland's not bad. I'll go ahead and plus. I do think I knock my opponent off black. Like, I've talked about Bowmasters a billion times. I think it's very clear how good that card is going to be. Uh, Bojukabog is technically relevant. I have a Cling to Dust somewhere in my deck and another one as the bottom card of my library. <laughs> yes. Are we done? Yeah, we're, we're, we're done. Okay, we, we played Mono Black Super Friends and it felt very good. So this is going to be a little awkward in that we can't expect most games to feel like that one. Like, that one I got to just shut off all of my opponent's tutoring and fetching ever. That's not going to be the norm, even if I board in more Ashioks. So I think I always want Ensnaring Bridge, despite the fact that my opponent can remove it, and some number of these things with the Ley Lines being the worst of these. I don't want Chain of Smog and Sedgemore, which I think. They're nice to help stabilize the board, but... My opponent can go a lot bigger than what I can with, like, Natural Order for Hoof and activate uh, Allosaurus Shepherd, so I don't know that I'm into that. I think I am going to ignore taxing their hand and try to play to the board for the most part. This gives me 63, at which point I could choose not to play the Leyline of the Voids and count on three Ashioks to sporadically clear out the graveyard. Sinkhole's weird, because Sinkhole destroys Gaia's Cradle, but a lot of times if my opponent has tapped it once, the damage is already done, so where does that leave us, you know? Maybe I don't Sinkhole. And I play the Ley Lines. Uh, I'm unsure on this decision. I'm also unsure what I do with the final card here. It's probably a Sedgemore Witch. And then maybe when I'm on the play, Sinkhole can be more attractive. Uh, mana does not work in this hand. Um, notably here, Engineered Plague might end up going on Orc rather than going on uh, 
elf. This is not really an elf deck anymore. Secondary hand has Curse of the Castle Loctwain again. On six, I probably keep this and just get rid of my smallpox and accept that I'm like the 54% or whatever to draw the black source that I need. And I don't know, like 48% of those or whatever are going to be untapped black sources, whereas three of them are another Castle Loctwain. Green Sun for Dryad Arbor is fine. It's actively good. Oh, nice. I spike the Swamp. So am I taking Engineer Plague on Dryad? I don't think so. I don't know that, like, Dryad Arbor is worth two cards right now. I think I would just like to establish this card. However, I think I do not minus at all. I think I just keep its full loyalty with the goal of keeping this alive until something like Ensnaring Bridge can come down and help protect it. The static ability of searching is just so important when my opponent is this, like, Tudor Gaia's Cradle deck. But now playing Engineered Plague to get rid of Dryad Arbor is more of a thing. But unless I draw a Dark Ritual, I don't get to just do it right away. What is this? Holy hell. Okay. Sure. That is oddly good against my current board. I guess I'll play Mishra's Factory to represent a trade with this. Um, awkward. Uh, very awkward. I don't want to lose a land. I, don't, I kind of feel like at the point where you're when you're playing a Sylvan Anthem, you should have just changed decks. And I, I mean this as someone who has played many of these, like, veteran, armorer, honor of the pure type cards in Legacy and Death and Taxes. Every time that I've done that, it was just not a good idea to be playing my deck. That's another non-search card. Oh, that's very good. That is very, very good. My opponent can take the bridge. The Engineered Plague is now, like, not that big of a deal. Yep. Just Sorcery Speed Endurance. I really need a removal spell here. When it gets their scry. Was there a reason to do this at sorcery speed? I'm not sure there was. Liliana the last hope. This plus is to what, four? I can make it so that my opponent can only hit one of the planeswalkers. It's probably the Lily the last hope. I probably need to keep this in play if possible. So I guess I'm fine with that, and I just need to be working towards drawing a bridge or a targeted removal spell or whatever. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to play Engineered Plague, put it on Dryad Arbor, and then use this to plus the following turn on Dryad Arbor. And then that actually accomplishes killing something. It just gives up my Ashiok, and a post-combat natural order for Atraxa just ends the game on the spot. Also, I think I'm supposed to do this on the Endurance. It lets my opponent split up damage, but then Dryad Arbor has to attack if my opponent wants to pressure, and I kind of deny them a mana. Uh, a small misplay on my end. I was just thinking about not letting them split the damage. Sure. My Edicts are getting worse. On the bottom to their card. Why are we playing another Cradle? Okay. So I lose Lily Last Hope. I'm going to lose Ashiok this turn now. Unless I hold back Mishra's Factory and Chump Block with it. I think I'd rather just draw a card, though. I'm going to do that while Bowmasters isn't a thing. Uh, it costs me some life here. Sure. Now, since I know this is going, I'm going to go ahead and just nuke my opponent's graveyard. It's not the best to do so. Like, it means Dryad Arbor can kill this, and Endurance can hit me for four. So, like, I take a little bit of extra damage for doing it. But then I stop, like, Fiend Artisans and Elvish Reclaimers and stuff from being better. Sure. Uh, notably, this is a look at, not a search, for the purposes of Ashiok. Finding Endurance. I mean, this is what my opponent wants, right? It's just, like, more large bodies. I don't think Sylvan Anthem should be in my opponent's deck. Like, 
but it is it is looking quite good here in my deck that like very specifically is built around abusing x1 creatures uh my opponent missed a shit ton of damage they attacked ashiok with endurance and me with dryad arbor um i'm not sure how experienced my opponent is either at legacy or this deck Let's edict my opponent. I'll probably take out Ignoble Hierarch by doing so. Yep. And now the goal is to just top deck removal or ensnaring bridge or whatever and stabilize this game before my opponent rips a natural order and kills me. I have a 3-3 blocker for Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor isn't live anymore. Uh, great, they bottomed their card for the scry. Okay. Oh, my opponent misses it. Onboard tricks. I have no idea why my opponent is attacking this with three different creatures. Two always kills it. Um, actually, hold on. I'm going to just double check something. I'm just going to make sure that Moto isn't doing this wrong. No, all three of those are, are indeed going at Lily. So I block Dryad Arbor. I'll grow this to a 3-3. Three, three. So I essentially trade Lily for Dryad Arbor, kind of. Liliana Last Hope. So I can play that, turn one of these Endurances into a two-power creature. I think I'm very awkwardly... Am I going Hellbent this turn? What are you, an Elemental Incarnation? I can just play this on Elemental. These are three threes. Six total power, four total power. Still kills Lily. I almost never hit a creature if I minus... Awkward. All right. I need to slow the bleeding here. We'll put that on elemental. 3-3 three, three doesn't trade with these. I think I am just going to play this out, let my opponent have this, and treat this as fog. By plussing, I, I gain 6 life. I'm going to take that as an okay thing for a card. It's not great. I'm going to take that as an okay thing. There's another Dryad Arbor. Opponent continues to bottom cards. Uh, Ignoble Hierarch is fine. Uh, notably, with Sylvan Anthem in play, my opponent has no creatures that can attack through Ensnaring Bridge anymore. Okay, so they attack. Planeswalker down to zero. I get hit for two. Cling to Dust. We're going to draw cards with this. Take out my opponents once upon a time to draw a card. Looking for like ensnaring bridge here. Dark Ritual. I think I am going to Dark Ritual activate Castle Lockwain and draw a card that way. This lets me leave up Mishra's Factory. Four mana. I can draw another card, or I can keep up Mishra's Factory, depending on which seems better. So if my opponent attacks me with everything, I can block and trade for Dryad Arbor, take 7. Or they can just attack with 2 Endurances and give me no reasonable blocks, and deal 6 damage. Uh, that's probably largely, strictly better. Or generally better. Uh, yeah, so I'll take this hit then. Since my opponent didn't attack with Dryad Arbor, I can use my mana to cling to dust instead and just have another out uh, in the form of Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, it's a little awkward if my opponent's final card is like Dryad Arbor or whatever. One, two. Oh man, I'm only drawing towards one Ensnaring Bridge. Not the greatest. Uh, a new Urborg is not what I want. A new Swamp is not what I want. Uh, okay. Activate Castle Lockdwain. Yeah. An Ashiok. Uh, not great. Uh, let's see how my opponent attacks. I'm going to hold up mana and see what they do. I think the answer is shove everything. Okay. Uh, you get to take my Ashiok, and then you can just see that you have Deterministic Lethal on board. Yeah, that's... That's unfortunate. My opponent threw away cards that game, like quite a few, when they didn't need to. Like, they threw away a Gaia's Cradle that could have been important for a large green sun later. But I did not get to do a lot that game, so say la vie.
So I can start thinking about Sinkhole and the other Sedgemore Witch when I am on the play. Despite the fact that my Engineered Plagues didn't do anything that time, unless my opponent is just packing a whole bunch of those Sylvan Anthems, they should, on average, do more than what they did that game by a lot. I think I'm going to call this good. Uh, yes, uh, this one's good. This one's really good. In fact, I get to cut off the graveyard as a resource. So Fiend Artisans and Friends always remain X1s, or at least they're smaller versions of themselves. And I get to turn one play Ashiok, backed by two removal spells. This is pretty ideal. So I'll start the game with Leyline in play. And then we'll stop fetching on turn one. I don't think I need to immediately minus before there's any cards in Graveyard. This is probably a devastating smallpox. Ooh, my opponent thought seizes. So which one of these does my opponent value more? It's almost certainly the smallpox. Yeah. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst is a sorcery, by the way. Actually, I guess if I have a ley line in play, I could like be very aggressive with an Ashiok. But something at some point is going to slip through and damage this. I think I just want to keep everything shut off. All right, uh, opponent just has been very lucky in terms of not having fetch lands. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, neither one of these are instants, just awkwardly. That's a draw. I don't think I do that yet. This one, I think, this turn. Let's take out the Noble Hierarch first. And then kind of the hope is Blood Chief's Thirst, a creature, Smallpox, a creature, and a land. Like, that That becomes, like, actively the plan. That is my opponent's third non-fetch land land in their Elvish Reclaimer deck that has a very large number of fetch lands. Uh, slightly frustrating. Also frustrating is that that's a third land, but not black, black, black. So, I'm holding up a Mishra's Factory block while I guess taking out Ignoble Hierarch as that produces both colors and Dryad Arbor only produces one. Uh, that's fine. Finding Endurance, uh, which is a very good card. Okay, that is at least still shut off by Ashiok. So let's see where we go from here. Okay, a regular old Edict. I probably cast that... I probably do it now. I could smallpox instead and make it less likely that my opponent can slip that endurance into play. But the problem with smallpox is that like Misty Rainforest is still just a land that they can legally sacrifice. So I don't think it makes sense to do that. If I wait, I can be holding up blockers and I still end up Shouldred's edicting the same stuff. But I can like potentially block and then tap this for mana to Edict afterwards. I think that's trying to have my cake and eat it too. Please sacrifice a non-token creature. So then my opponent most of the time chooses between making a 3-4 creature and putting an attack on Ashiok. And they're going to go for the creature, at which case like any removal spell I draw just becomes very good. Uh, yeah, this is fine. So I'll play this Kill Dryad Arbor. Yeah. My opponent will float, play Endurance. They can kill the Ashiok and then turn this fetch on, but that leaves me with Lily into Smallpox, uh, which is really strong. And if I'm going to lose this anyway, uh, let's have a chance at like getting rid of an Atraxa or whatever. Uh, we got rid of a Hogak. Spicy. Another Hierarch could be weird, because that could allow this attack to be valid. And then it makes like a Smallpox worse. Uh, that's fine. That's not actually looks for a Hierarch to take the Lily out of play. They both sage you. Uh, that's fine. Alright, so Ashiok is down, as I kind of anticipated happening. And we'll see what my opponent's follow-up is. Probably not fetching a Dryad Arbor directly into Lily. Okay, so their last card is Bo Seiju. So they can Bo Seiju my Leyline if they would like. Uh, yeah, I will happily do some searching and pick up another land. Uh, it's possible they save that for this. Ooh. Uh, 
I don't think I need to tell you that that's good. So we'll just eat it. And we will just start immediately ticking this up. Uh, this is by no means a done deal or anything, but I have a very potent combination of cards here. Flash creatures can get a little weird, but smallpox handles most of them pretty well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you play it and make me Lily plus on it. This isn't a scary thing until six mana. All right. So plus, kill that. Would I like to smallpox and trade a land for a land? I think so, because then I can, like, Lily plus. So let's go, just go ahead and do this. I'll sacrifice my Urborg. Just don't need that. Lily plus. My opponent doesn't have cards. And then I'll send in for two points of damage. At this point, I have small creatures covered and a big creature covered while clocking my opponent or having a blocker to protect these. And I think as soon as I hit a Lily ultimate, it's pretty hard for me to lose. Um, I don't think I care about this card. I'm going to play it, though. So I am now going to Lily plus... And if my opponent has a flash creature, it comes in right now, and then I can Lily minus to make it smaller. Or sorry, uh, Lily on a last hope plus to make it smaller. Opponent leaves my graveyard, uh, which does matter for cling to dust. So we'll shrink this. It's only attacking for one, meaning that I still have a valid edict on my turn. I haven't seen a Bowmasters from my opponent yet, right? Like, I'm talking about that card as if it is in my opponent's deck, but I just haven't seen it. So it'll be interesting to see which Liliana my opponent attacks, because this one is about to ultimate, but this one represents getting rid of the Endurance. Okay, yeah, they're going for Liliana of the Veil. Okay, yeah. Wall. Uh, target player. Sacrifices a creature. I, I, I think I just ultimate it now before some weird Assassin's Trophy type card comes in and messes with me. I don't think I need to greed it up and try to keep the body around. Uh, that just feels unnecessary. Uh, one Dryad Arbor in exile. There could be another Dryad Arbor right here. Um, there is not immediately, at the very least. So some sort of like natural order for Atraxa stuff could be weird, but... If my opponent gets Dryad Arbor, they, it has summoning sickness if they didn't just do it on the iron stuff. Oh, I think my opponent just realized their mistake. Oh, no. Now they're realizing their mistake. Oh, no. Uh, it's a green sun. Sure. Ooze, fiend artisan. What are we working with? It is a fiend artisan, uh, which is reasonable. Uh, I'll, still, I'll still edict. The fiend artisan starts getting big. Uh, it's not that much of a problem, though. Um, I haven't masked this out, but I imagine that my opponent dies in another turn or so. Because uh, this just ramps up so quickly. Uh, so, assuming my Mishra's Factory is the one that gets blocked, what, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This is just lethal next turn. Uh, yep, uh, that's not that spooky right now. Uh, notably, this is Sacrifice Another. Uh, so I believe I just have a Deterministic Onboard win here. So, target player sacrifices a creature. Yeah, there we go. We are uh, we are putting the wins on the board with Pox. Matches are taking a while, but we are getting there. Okay, final round here. I have to believe in the top of my deck a little bit. Like, if we can follow... Uh, if we can follow up this early game with something like a Planeswalker, I'm in okay shape. So... I would like you to take a look at my opponent's hand and notice the lack of green mana. I choose Mox Diamond. And, uh, lands doesn't actually play that many green lands. Like, this is a mulch version. Its density of green might be a little bit higher than a more traditional lands deck. All right, there's Field of the Dead. And now things can get a little weird. Holy shit. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, I have a plan. I'm going to make infinite dudes. 
And I've got a Shoulders Edict for uh, Merit Lage. Ooh, there's green. Okay, we are we are playing a game of magic. There's the life from the loom. All right. Ledgemore, Witch, and Pass. Now, this doesn't literally kill my opponent. It only makes infinite creatures. So something like a crop rotation for Tabernacle can mess up my plans. All right. There's that mulch. Maze of Ith, Tranquil Thicket, that's fine. Okay, my opponent was kind of in the tank there for a minute. So they, they... Okay. So, I am going to make infinite duders. This does come at the cost of sacrificing the rest of my stuff, but it's whatever. And at the end of this, I can also make my opponent discard two. Okay. Uh, in real life, I would have made billions of these... Uh, on Magic Online, I have clicked this for like five minutes. I'm not going to call that good enough. Um, I wanted to make enough so that if my opponent tabernacles me, I gain enough that I can live through a couple of Merit Lage hits. Attack for three. Opponent's at 16. Opponent needs like a Tabernacle or Glacial Chasm type card or they're dead. Uh, Life from the Loom doesn't reveal anything interesting off a of dredge. There's a Cycle Tranquil Thicket, which can dredge life from the loom, which does not reveal one of the cards. That's my opponent's out. And presumably if they're doing that, they don't just have the crop rotation. All right, glad I clicked through that for five minutes. Okay, so we're playing against lands. I don't have the best interaction here. Ashiok is reasonable. Leyline is reasonable. This can hit enchantments. That's reasonable. Null Rod is not great, but I might end up playing it. Blood Chief's Thirst is not exactly awesome. I probably get rid of that. Thought Seizes are not great. I probably get rid of those. The Sorcery Speed Edicts are not the best, but I'm probably keeping them. So these help out with like the Exploration, Mana Bond, um, Mox Diamond sort of cards. Liliana the Last Hope is, like, not great. I am probably just going to keep it as a slow win condition. Smallpox is awkward. My opponent's better at rebuilding most of the time than I am. Maybe I trim some smallpox. Like, this kind of attacks some of the same stuff that smallpox does if you look at it sideways and kind of a little bit funny. These are Magic the Gathering cards. This is not as good as, like, a Dark Ritual-based hand. I think I'm just going to keep it anyway. It can stop a mana bond or exploration. It can technically snipe a life from the loam. Liliana the Veil isn't amazing. My opponent's going to five. Let's see what your five looks like. Uh, mana bond's good. Is it happening on turn one? A lot of times I imagine the answer is no. Uh, this time the answer is yes. So my opponent just fully has gambled on the top of their deck being reasonable. Um, so what I need to think about here is whether or not I want to, like, wasteland the Thespian stage immediately. Um, weird. I think I say no. If my opponent top decks Dark Depths this turn and makes their 20-20, like, so be it. But I think I need to have access to, like, the sinkholes and feed the swarms of the world. Sure. Okay. On its last card could be like Veil of Summer. Would like not be the best for me. Would be crop rotation. In which case I am a sad panda. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this. And some portion of the time just crop rotation dark depths get me for not holding up wasteland. But I think there's a lot of upside to taking the risk. Because it means that every like mulch or life from the loam type card that my opponent gets is worse, just kind of forever, full stop. Speaking of, I cling to dust that, and that's fine. And then I like sinkhole the thespian stage for this turn cycle, probably. That means playing Urborg. Uh, I guess sinkhole first. Uh, so we don't want to wasteland here, because if my opponent wastelands, I, or if I wasteland, they could turn it into a forest or a swamp. 
Okay, it occurred. Now I will cling the life from the loam. Oh, my opponent's last card is not a cycle land. Uh, it is not. Okay. My situation is not the best. I still think my opponent is favored in this game. However, I am trending towards a portion of the game where I might be able to start pull ahead, pulling ahead. Like if I find like an Ashiok or something like that. Uh, this isn't a card yet. So I am going to get this going. It's a little weird. I'm going to plus and get rid of my Mishra's factory. I'm quite far away from wanting to attack with a 2-2, uh, especially into my opponent's potentially uh, punishing fire having hand. So goodbye factory. There is a Boseju. So I'm not interested in wastelanding my opponent off of amounts of mana unless I start decreasing it like their land count below 2. Uh, that's uh, that's an exception. I have to take out this grove. Uh, I can't let them continue to uh, pick off both this lily and the follow-up lily. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll see where this goes. Ashiok is so clutch. So, so, so clutch. What's my worst card? Secondary lily? Probably secondary lily. I'm just going to go ahead and plus and take this out of my hand, I end up, I guess I end up with a Lily at four if I just cast it, but then I don't leave up Edict. That's probably fine. I'm leaving up Cling to Dust, though. Like, Cling to Dust taking out this Punishing Fire or a Critical Land seems better. So let's go ahead and Cling and get rid of the Punishing Fire. Um, that is my whole graveyard for now. I technically should have done this on my own turn in case Crop Rotation for uh, a new... Grove is a thing. Yeah. Okay, so my opponent punishes my line, which I knew about. I just had passed the turn before I processed it. Uh, Ashiok. Oh, that's really good. So, Wasteland. Blow up Grove. Lily plus, I'll discard my Shouldred's Edict. My opponent will then Punishing Fire Lily. And keep her at two. I drop the Edict to then clear my opponent's graveyard and stop all their crop rotation effects. So I gave away a little value there. I'm now very far ahead on board. Do I mill my opponent or myself? I think I'm going to mill myself here and give myself more fuel for Cling to Dust. Uh, I had some stinkers on top of the library, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's actively good for me. Because of Ashiok's static ability. So, bam. Lily plus. Uh, I think I'm going to take two points of damage here. Uh, rather than holding up Cling to Dust. Like, the, the damage is quite good. And this is four mana to do. So I've dropped this temporarily. That shouldn't matter most of the time. Um... Is that good? This is like the Ashiok smallpox problem. I don't think I do that. I think I just Lily plus. All right, there's a Mox Diamond. I will continue to take two points of damage when I know that it is safe. And I can start just working towards an ultimate on this to... Uh, no, don't do that. That, oh yeah, um... Uh, yeah. Yep. That's just, you know, habit of, you know, do the do the end of turn fetch. Ooh, new Ashiok. So I would now like to find some sort of wasteland to make it so that I accidentally don't get 20'd out of this game. I think this turn I don't take damage. Let's draw. So take a new card. I found a sinkhole. That's great. So let's... Ashiok, target myself for more fuel, nuke my opponent's graveyard. I think I just continue to tick this up and give up my secondary Ashiok. I think the secondary Ashiok doesn't matter too much. 
I need to dodge Dark Depths this one turn specifically. I am currently at the full 20 life. Mulch. Uh, what? So that's Poseidon Blast Zone Field. Poseidon Field Blast Zone. Yeah. Okay. So this can get Planeswalkers, right? It can. So things are going to get slightly more awkward, but it's still not a problem. Oh, now it's very much not a problem. So I sinkhole, target the blast zone. My opponent will copy it with Thespian Stage, and then I'll wasteland that. Yaw. Oh, Sage you, my Mishra's factory. That gives up Field of the Dead to the Liliana Plus. Uh, I'm not sure that I like that line. All right, so that's gone. I play Wasteland. Wasteland, Thespian Stage. Lily plus Field of the Dead out of your hand. Ashiok minus. I'll continue to target myself. I'm not in any danger of milling out or anything. Now I have mana to cling to dust. Uh, I'll like target the Lily. Smallpox, feed, Wasteland. Lily, Ashiok. Another card. Could have just gained three life there to be at above 20. All right, both Planeswalkers have been activated. I think I did a small punt by, uh, what was it, not activating the Cling to Dust a couple turns ago to get rid of the Punishing Fire before my opponent had drawn a card. But I think my opponent's last turn cycle was pretty bad. So my opponent draws three with Mulch, but, like, I've got goodies. Got Cling to Dust for days. I probably keep a uh, lily around. Let's cast a dark ritual. <clears throat> and then I'll cling to dust, get rid of my opponent's wasteland. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I've drawn a sinkhole, which I think I'm just fine with using. Take out my opponent's red mana here. Actually, I don't have an Urborg in play. If I take this out, like this Tabernacle doesn't tap... Uh, no, the red mana seems more valuable. Yaw. At this point, I'll be fine with Liliana Plus. I'll keep this Planeswalker around. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to Ashiok target my opponent and start chipping away at their library. And at any point, I can choose to Liliana Ultimate. Uh, to destroy some of my opponent's lands. I'll cling to dust to draw a card. Um, I'll make my land drop first. So let's make my land drop. I'll Liliana plus. Do what my opponent's cooking with over there. Uh, it's a Yavimaya. Now I'll cling to dust that land. Just get a new card out of this. Okay, nice. I found a new win condition. This just stays in play to prevent crop rotation and friends from being relevant. And I think as soon as my opponent plays one more land, I just Lily Minus and take out two of their lands and call that good enough and start ticking up again from there. Awkward. I think I'm just going to plus again. I don't need this Urborg. All right, there's a crop rotation that was dead. I don't think I play that. If I had gone... After my opponent's library more aggressively, instead of, like, fueling my own cling to dusts, this game is, like, closer to over via mill. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and ultimate. Um, I'm just gonna put the wasteland in a different pile. Because this is my win condition right now. It's just attacking with this, you know, six-ish times. My opponent keeps multiple lands. I'll just drop a factory into play, and then we'll, you know, just continue to Lily plus my opponent's hand into Oblivion. At some point, I can Ashiok clear my opponent's graveyard once I draw another Ashiok. Annoying. Not the end of the world, but annoying. Life from the Loom. Sure. So at some point, I probably need to just Ashiok minus. Awkward timing for that. Got Cling to Dust with one, two, three, four in Graveyard. Let's just Cling to Dust that away. Plus, discard the Castle Locked Wayne. My opponent discards a Wasteland. 
Link to Dust, target life from the loam. Uh, notably, this does take my two creatures out of my graveyard for the purposes of, like, Merit Lage. Chain of Smog. Not the most relevant card in the world. It can help my opponent from, or stop my opponent from accruing too many resources in hand and just playing around my Lily. So let's... Lily plus... I'll discard this Chain of Smog. My opponent discards whatever they have in hand. Now that I know they're Hellbent, I'll Ashiok minus mill them. And then do it again. Uh, and now... The deck is a very real clock at this stage, just like literally running my opponent out of cards. Ashiok represents 12 of the 18 gone. And my opponent's mulches start to become a little awkward to cast. Uh, sure. Play Smallpox. Get rid of a Swamp. Opponent keeps a Wasteland. I nuke a bunch more cards. I should really be keeping track of, like, what I have and haven't taken out. Like, what's in their exile zone, but I'm low enough on clock that I'm not going to do that. Like, I still just have a decent number of, uh, yeah, whatever, game actions that I'm going to want to take. Okay, sure. Ashiok minus you. Last turn. And at this point, I'm going to kind of be F6-ing my opponent's turns. I think Hole on Forest is uh, very strong. I guess I... No, I can't Lily on a plus first. Okay. And my opponent throws in the towel. And folks, that is a 4-1 with Pox. So today's matches were hard-fought victories. We didn't really get very many free wins, uh, with the exception of one of the players that just kind of tilted off and conceded very quickly. And I'm not going to tell you that this was the, the better deck in any of my rounds, because I, I don't think it was. But if you don't make very many mistakes, and you get a little bit lucky, Pox can still do what I just did. Um, I, I think there's some very obvious downsides of playing this. The play draw disparity is pretty big, uh, especially with some of these cards like Ashiok, where, you know, if you're on the play, sometimes you can steal a win just by doing that on turn one. You know, your sinkhole is much better. Like if you curve your, your turn one thought sees your turn two sinkhole or something like that. Um, sometimes the, the smallpox uh, is also better on the play where like, you play Swamp and Pass, your opponent goes, like, land Noble Hierarch, and you get, you know, just a disgusting Smallpox that takes out two mana sources at once. Uh, so, like, there's some pretty high variance here. And, like, Joldred's Edict and Friends can be very awkward in a Bowmaster world, which is, like, why some of this sort of stuff exists. I don't know that I necessarily give this one the thumbs up, but, like, if you want to have a good time, and you have four hours to kill. Uh, th this was a, a very enjoyable experience, and I definitely got to think my way out of some weird spots. We, we did see some weird things come up, um, like we did see the Castle Lockwain problem of it being the only black source in the hand. We did see a couple hands without black sources. Um, we did see Cling to Dust being good and Cling to Dust being, you know, just kind of an awkward cycler in the face of Orcish Bowmasters. But for a box deck, this, this felt pretty good. And if you need any cards so you can play this one in your local, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your order. And folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!